one day I was down helping my dad in the yard and he says, hey Phil, you think you can mow, mow this? We got another machine in there. I think you did it right. And I'm going there, it's an old tractor. Now this is one of the addictions, I guess you could call it. It's gravely tractors. It's just little walk behind things. They're sort of me. That's gravel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> says never to mention gravel. I'm an old man, so they call it gravel. <laughs> <laughs> I start filling with these things, and I, you know, I, and I got it running. So I'm out going around, you know, this is a big thing. You know, the design is you walk behind and beats the crap out of you every time you go over and bump them. And I sort of got interested in these things. I'm like, these things were failing. And I go to yeah, Home Depot and you buy one of these you know, John Deere for like what 500 bucks, and it'll run three seasons. And it's done. This thing is from the 1940s, and it fired up after sitting for who knows how long. And I sort of got interested in that. And next thing you know, I got another one. And then another one, and then another one, and now I have about ten gravely sitting around <laughs> in my garage. And it, you know, I was starting to learn more and more. And then one day, my mom was like, "You know, Philip, um, I think a good, I have, um, I have a guy in the hospital to take care of. She's a nurse, and he volunteers over the transportation museum. And I've been talking to him about you, and he said maybe you should go over there and see if you can volunteer. So I came over here when I was about ten years old and started off here, and you know, had me." cleaning oil spots off the floor, which this thing has already started making. It's only been here for about 15 minutes. <laughs> but, you know, cleaning stuff, and I polish the brass, and all you know, I clean the cars around here, and, you know. And then they started doing my tour guides here, you know. So I said, okay. okay. And they learned all the stuff about the collection. I started giving tours and stuff, and I was learning more. And pretty soon I was doing bigger jobs on the cars, you know. Every day I learned something new here, like these old guys back there they didn't have laughing at me, but <laughs> they were walking the encyclopedia, you know, they'll tell you anything. You know, I just figured out I brought this car up here today for the tech day. And this little headlight bar, you know, I guess they only made this style for a month in 1926. Don't I thought they all had that, but I guess this type of bracket here and usually the headlights are mount right on this, like they only made that for a month and like these guys who carry all this stuff and then they track me on the serial number the exact day it was built. I never knew. On February 4th, 1926, I knew what year it was. I mean, these guys were just a walk on the encyclopedia here. But the, how I came to get this car was I have a relative, you might have heard of him, a humble farmer. He has a radio show and he has a TV show and you know, he does stand up comedy. But I'm somehow related to him. He's got the whole family tree deciphered and he was best friends with my great great grandfather, so that qualified me, I guess, for the ownership of the car. <laughs> And he'd been trying to give it to me for a while. I first tried when I was 10 years old, and um, and my parents said no, which is probably a good thing. I'm probably wrecked with them. So. And just last summer, you know, he kept on mentioning it, and he brought his tea here for one of the shows. He has quite a few of the barns full of them. He brought me his running ones here and started talking, you know, and I got home and started being real nice, you know, the room's nice and clean, and mowed the lawn and everything, and finally built up the courage. And I'm like, hey, mom, um, Robert Scoogland talked to me today, and you know, he wants to give me that car. And she, you know, she sort of has my talk to my dad, and he was a little bit more for it. And, um, and so we, when me and my dad went over to take a look at it, we thought it was going to be a pile of junk because we've seen a lot of stuff that Robert Scoogland has, and um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not in the best of shape. And one of the guys that helps me a lot, my general people, like, hey, Robert Scoogland, he's giving you a car, and he doesn't give away anything because you know what, like. It's sort of like a Taj Mahal, Robert Sewell's collection. All the guys in the T-Club know about him. They'll go over there and try and buy stuff off him. And he'll just, you know, he doesn't want to sell it, so he'll just keep on making the price higher, you know. But, and one of my friends in the phone store, oh, Susan's using your car? And why don't they want to try and buy a truck? And, you know, he can draw it right in the ground. I'm just going to use it for parts. And he's like, well, you can have it for $2,000. And he's like, yeah, that's what he wanted for. And he's like, and I told him I'd offer him 250 for it. And he said, for 250 bucks, I'd rather burn that than give it to you. And he's like, it might make up for a fire there. <laughs> <laughs> so he was known for sort of trying to cling on to stuff, but he gave me this car and we went over there to look at it in the barn. I was really amazed. I mean, the car is pretty solid. I mean, it's got good metal on it, and it's got some rough spots where the roof leak. It's got some tar or rubber around it instead of an inner tube that melted on there. <laughs> There was, and I started looking at the car, and I was like, oh, this thing isn't actually that bad. And I was looking around it, and the whole thing looked like a haunted house before I cleaned it up. It's got stuff hanging down, the whole roof was caved in, and I <laughs> couldn't even see inside. It was knee high, and covered all this mouse stuff. And so, 
event that we, we um, I don't know if you see on TV, but it's taking video of documentary and the whole thing of us pulling out of the garage in a tractor and scooching around because it was, it was really tight spacing plus the bar sort of collapsing so we had to <laughs> get it out of there and drag it around in the tractor and um, looking over, you know, some things not bad so I mentioned I paid him one dollar for it <laughs> and on the bill of sale it says I'm not responsible for any pain or aggravation caused by the restoration <laughs> and or operation of the vehicle. <laughs> then he's, I'm like, He's like, no, that, that, that part's for your dad. And you have three lines. <laughs> so I sign, my dad sign. <laughs>